We are the youth. Wow. 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 Yeah, Mr. Craig. You you have the beats today, Mr. They Craig. Got this problem, child. They better rhymes gone wild. Why are you singing Youth Gone Wild, Mr. Craig? I don't know, Mr. Jason, but you know. I bet you can is tell it, me. Is it because we're taking a stroll down Sid Row? Oh, we sure are. As the youth has gone wild. Oh, na 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 Insurance day to marketing mastery. Pretty good. Let's do this, Mr. Jason. Buckle up. It's the Insurance Dudes Podcast. Hey, Craig, um, this year I got some crazy growth goals for my agency. And actually, I've been talking to a few other agents. They got some crazy growth goals. So um, can you tell me a little bit what, about what you're doing that's just crushing it in your agency right now? Yeah, well, we're doing a lot of internet data leads uh, through a uh, company called EverQuote. And they're actually one of our sponsors. Ooh. Yeah. We're, so can and you I'm tell me a little of, bit about that? Yeah, part of the Accelerated Growth Program. Um, which includes having your own consultant that's going to go over your results. And it's, it's positioned to make those leads cost less so that you have lower acquisition costs. It makes it totally doable. Awesome. And so, so what, have been, what has been your favorite parts about it so far? I like the, I like the visibility into the results um, and, and being able to compare what the, the numbers that they get on their side with the numbers that I get on my side and seeing that they mesh up. So we know that the data is correct and that we're actually uh, you know, in, in a cost per policy or cost per sale that, uh, that makes sense. Right. Yeah, cool. they make it real easy to track. And you know what? Guess what? They gave us a deal to offer to all of the insurance dudes and dudettes out there. Oh, I got to know about this. Yeah, you, all me. you need to do is go to go.everquote.com forward slash insurance dudes. That's go.everquote.com forward slash insurance dudes. And they give all the insurance dudes out there a killer price on this. Mm, so I'm ooh. signing up. Boom! Boom! Whoa! Whoa! How you, <laughs> how you doing? What's up? Don't tell me. Is this a, is this a video podcast? Or are you guys just... It is. We record, we, so we put video on YouTube because some agents haven't been able to navigate to the podcast setting on their okay. phone. All right. They're like, how do I find your podcast? Well, <laughs> go to podcasts and type in the name. All right. All, well, uh, most of it is all audio. We have a, a small uh, group of people that watch it on YouTube. All right. Small. Sweet. Sweet. Well, uh, They'll have to deal with my very crappy video. I didn't realize we were doing video today, so. But it's, it's great all to good. see you guys. No, it's I all love good. to actually see people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, snap. Hold on. I just oh, lost sorry. audio. What did I just do? There we go. Okay. I'm snapping. Oh. All okay, right. Yeah. That was lame. So, Sid Sydney. Sid Row. Sidney Row. I got it. I, I got to tell you guys, first of all, I love that your podcast is called The Insurance Dudes. Like I, and let me tell you why, <laughs> let me tell you why, because I've had two experiences in my life where people tried to, to get me to stop using the word dude. dude. Once was in, d dude. <laughs> <laughs> so once was in college, my, my uh, moot court professor tried to tell me, Stop saying, like, I get it if you want to say it, you know, in class, but don't say it when we're in an actual trial, you know, mock trial or whatever. <laughs> uh, and then the other one was uh, my, my, my very first gig uh, out of my dad's agency, uh, my, my first real job. Uh, they, they said, you know, I just, the, if you keep using the word dude, people aren't going to take you seriously and you're already young. So don't shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> and both of those times, I could have stopped using the word dude, and I said, no way, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, and that's it's, you. That's right. it. Yes. Why are they trying to yes. tell you to not be you? Dude. Because that, that was the, the you know, 20, 30-year-old model. Back yeah. then, you would have to wear a tie. You had to talk a certain way. Everybody had a, it was like mm. a lemmings kind of mm. mentality. Now, now everybody smells the crap, so, they, <laughs> so you got to be yourself. Yes. Otherwise, I, I know some carriers that wouldn't want you to be yourself, Mr. Jason. 
<laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Can't talk about him though. So there's, a, there's always that guy. There's yeah. always that guy. So, <laughs> but I just, I, I just, I mean, when I got the invite from you guys to be on the podcast, I was kind of like, oh my God, my world has now, it's like, I'm, I'm officially like complete because I've come full circle <laughs> from all the people who told me, don't say the word dude. And now I'm on the insurance dudes podcast. You know and what? Now you, you should send say them dude. the link, send them the link. <laughs> <laughs> I love well, it. Yeah. Sid Rose. So you're the CMO of uh, B Atomic. B Atomic. Yeah. Before we go there. Atomic. Yeah. Before we go there, okay. we're going to ask you something personal. Oh, yes. what is, go, dude. What is the go. first concert you went to? All the way um, back, the very first. If it was Barney when you were in kindergarten, the then it's very, that. Okay, so <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Yes. So That's I was, I was actually for. homeschooled, so nice. I didn't even know what a concert was. My very right. first concert was actually out of college. Wow. Justin bieber nice yes oh, that is so of, good are you in the bieber nation part I, of the bieber nation i kind of am i mean once you yeah <laughs> bieber fever yeah i kind of you're a yes. believer i mean a i believer. have a, i have a t-shirt so <laughs> i think i'm awesome. a fish I now. saw a recent picture of him he doesn't look i was gonna <laughs> i was gonna Sorry. bring that up <laughs> the new album that he launched where he looks like he's trying to be too mature for his his own good. Yeah. Is, he looks like a plumber, right? Is this, is this what we're talking about? He looks like a, I saw a picture and he's That's wearing like a, like, a, like a flannel with a mustache. Yep. Yep. That's the he one. He looks my age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I've seen you everywhere all over LinkedIn and Facebook. And I don't know if it's because, okay. you know, once Zuckerberg and whoever invented LinkedIn identify that, you know, <laughs> you're looking at each other, then, you know, then you just see them or if it's just because you are everywhere and that that's likely. I think um, it's the dudes uniting. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> the dudes and the dudette. <laughs> so, so um, for anybody who's been living under a rock and isn't on social media, doesn't know who you are, why don't you give us your background? How'd you get into insurance and, and, and how'd you get to where you are? Well, my dad uh, owns an insurance agency, started by my grandpa, yeah. so got sucked in from a very early age, and I actually told my dad, I'm never going to work at mm. your insurance agency. I'm never going to work in insurance. Never. It's so boring. And now this look at me. what happens when you say never. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. So, um, yeah, I, I, I ended up uh, working for the insurance association out of school because I was trying to figure out how to merge uh, international, an international politics and policy degree with insurance. And I had to do an internship and I was like, Oh, insurance association, let's do it. Mm. Ended up working there for two years, uh, got a job after my internship. And then, um, uh, they started a technology arm called trustedchoice.com trying to be a, Ooh. essentially like a lead generator, uh, visibility platform, many different terms that are, have been created to describe them uh, <laughs> for an, for the independent insurance agency channel. And I went to work for them, helped build out that the marketing side of things. They're very heavy on SEO. And then they, as a side hustle, started Agency Nation, which what the, go the goal was to take all the insights and information and education, everything that we were learning, and then pass it on to independent insurance agents if mm. they wanted to do it themselves. So it was really a, a media platform and an educational platform. Uh, we spun off a conference called Elevate. We had about a thousand people last okay. year. Um, and, uh, and then uh, three years ago, I met this crazy dude named Seth Zaremba. I don't know mm. if his name rings a bell, mm -mm. but he's when an insurance. Yes, you do. He is an insurance agent from Cleveland, Ohio, and he, you definitely need to have him on the podcast. He is, he is, he is just, I, there's no words to describe who Seth is, um, mm -hmm. but he and I met three years ago and he was building a piece of technology inside of his agency. And uh, I took a look at it and was like, wow, this is great. Had him on the podcast for Agency Nation 
And if you, that was three years ago, if you look at the analytics, now I haven't been at Agency Nation for seven months, but if you look at the analytics from seven months ago, um, we've published thousands of podcasts. We had about 8,000 listeners a month from all over the industry. That wow. podcast was in the top five podcasts for like three years running. So, wow. uh, so I wow. knew that what he was doing hit home. I knew that what he was saying and how he was thinking about the tech problems in the insurance industry was striking a very emotional chord with insurance agents. And he said he was starting a company and I said, let's freaking go. Boom. So that was seven months ago. Nice. And here I am. Yeah. Well, so talk about Be Atomic. Be Atomic. So we are and that's a- the company you're referring to. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would have been awkward. <laughs> smooth. That was, that was smooth. Uh, yeah. So Be Atomic, we are a, a technology platform uh, that is focused on helping agents understand, uh, collect, understand, leverage, and monetize their data. So, um, Unfortunately, right now, these base systems that independent agents have in their agencies do an incredible job at managing policies, right? Risk information, risk data. But if you think about what an insurance agent does every single day, it's people, it's relationships, it's um, process, it's experience. Mm -hmm. And our systems don't have the flexibility or capability of truly helping an agent do that well and scale off of it. So how can we start rethinking uh, what type of data we're collecting, how we're structuring it, and how we're analyzing it and even sharing it with our partners, carriers, and other tech vendors in order cr to create the best experience for our customers, get more operational insight, and, and really start to claw back some of that margin that agents are losing. Mm. So that's the goal in a nutshell. Love it. Love it. So that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, talk that about that a, kind of undertaking. Like yeah. How, how, how do I, well, um, it's, this was really Seth's idea. So he, um, he's a steel engineer and he entered the insurance world about 12 years ago and went through many of the you know same growing pains that startup agents and other agents go through trying to scale his business and uh, understand what's going on. And as he grew his agency, he realized that a competitive advantage for him could be technology. And he started going out to all these vendors and saying, and trying to piece together a solution, right? And met with a ton of frustration because base systems can't open up. They can't really share data. Um, they're not collecting all the data that they need to. And then we've got all this great insure tech technology that's supposed to sort of sit on top and provide an experience, but none of it, none of it talks to each other. And you've got all this manual entry. And so it's, it's crazy because the thing that we were told was going to help us, you know, scale and and grow and provide this amazing customer experience is creating even more work inside of an agency and he got he just got incredibly frustrated by it and said okay well where am i going to go from here and um started building out the platform he's been running on it for three years uh he's got 16 pilot agents right now so they're going to be going live on the product in two, 18 days so, Ooh. yep, yep, 17 days. Sorry, there's only 29 days in February. It's, it's the tricky month. It is tricky. But yeah. that's an so, extra. Yeah. <laughs> is there any details you can tell us about the, about the system? Yeah. Well, uh, what do you want to know? I mean, my gosh, I could tell you. I mean, it's built off Salesforce. So okay. it is a, um, it's a, it's essentially, you know, when you get Salesforce, it's like a, it's like a Lamborghini that comes in a box of parts. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, you could give you could give Salesforce to Amazon, you could give Salesforce to your local pet shop, and you could you could really do anything with it. Right. And it's a ton of money because you've got to customize it for each individual business. So what Seth did is he took on that initial cost of really building this thing out for an independent insurance agency, thinking through it as an independent insurance agent. And um 
and created this cust essentially custom independent insurance agency data management platform. And, um, and that's what he's got running inside of his agency right now. So um, me, maybe I can uh, give you guys a use case and that might help. So mm. let's say for example, um, let's say for an example, you've got a, a customer who calls in and wants to uh, change their, they bought a new car, right? So they had a blue car on their auto insurance policy and now they want a red car. They've got a red car, right? So you got to requote it. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of new information has to go into the system, but there's a lot of different steps in that process. And right now all the system tracks is, is there a policy in the system and what is the policy? But as a business owner, you want to know a ton of different things like, Hey, uh, when did the person call? And, um, uh, let's say they call back, where are we at in the process? Right? So, uh, is it, is it the customer's fault that things haven't moved forward because we're waiting on information for them for a, an app? Is there something, uh, is there a roadblock within the agency because a team member hasn't gotten information to a carrier? Is there friction at the carrier level because they haven't quoted it fast enough? How long are things taking, right? So if a customer calls back in and says, hey, uh, what's going on with, with this you know, new policy? I, gotta, I wanna drive my car. Um, you know, you, the, the team member can look at the, the process, the experience and figure out what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Does it analyze you, the lengths that that takes and all that stuff so that they can figure out like the analytics behind all that? Like, let's say the, the ad car and the, you know, whatever endorsements and all that stuff and then analyze it against every, all the clients essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, you can aggregate, you could say, okay, I need the system to show me how long it's taking my team to uh, requote auto policies. And you mm. could visualize that data and figure out what's going on. Um, Seth was looking at his, uh, some of his numbers from last year and realized that one of his team members was missing 57% of their phone calls. 57%. Wow. Holy yeah. moly. So that's a conversation that has to be had. Yeah. Ooh, um, yeah, it is. <laughs> right. And so the fact, though, that you've got the data to be able to say what's going on, and then you can work with the team member to, to fix it and watch in real time as they, they actually start to solve the problem. And how does that affect the customer? And how does that affect the rest of the team? And how does that affect the carrier? You can visualize and see all those things within the system because of the way we're collecting the data right? And the data that we're collecting. So it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun stuff. And, and having that information, having that data, how does that, what does that do? What does that, how does that enable the 16 test agencies? Like what have they said? Right. So they are not on the platform yet. They will oh, okay. be come the end of February. Gotcha. Um, what will they say? What will they? Yes. I wish That's I could the see the future. Yeah. Well, here's, <laughs> Here's the other piece of it, right? Um, because the systems that we have manage policies, when, when we're talking to each other about business operations, right? How do you, how do you go from being a, an incredible sales machine as an agency hmm. to a sustainable business? Those are two different things. And they revolve around this concept of process and culture and right, all the things that you, you know, you hear about leadership. So all of that is kind of left to tribal knowledge in a way, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, my dad will tell me, you know, as I sit across the desk from, Hey, this is the way we've always done things, you know, or here's our book of processes. Here's a, here's some paper that outlines all the processes that we have. And there's no real way to understand how a business, how an insurance agency is working and what's working and what's not working and where are the friction points and what are customers feeling and how are, how close is our partnership with our carriers? So what the, what we're trying to build is a way for agencies to not only see that with, within their own business, but what if you can start to aggregate all that data across mm. the insurance agencies in the platform? Now it not only becomes a conversation internally, 
but an industry conversation that's saying, hey, um, you know, row insurance, you guys are doing a great job, but guess what? Um, uh, dude, I totally forgot your last Pretzinger. The Pretzinger insurance agency is, um, is running two times faster on their claims. They're getting two, twice as many claims uh, or quotes through, right? Obviously, and they're, yes. And they're, <laughs> <laughs> right, Obviously. so I, I gotta know, like what is Craig doing? How is he doing that, right? Because at the end of the day, yeah, at the end of the day, yes, we are, we're, we're all competitors, but at the end of the day, we're all subject to the greater competition of directing mm. barriers. Yeah. So how can we figure out how to work together uh, in a more meaningful, impactful, efficient way and share some of that how so it's not tribal knowledge where I'm sitting across the desk just talking to my dad saying, hey, and those conversations are great and I love them, but there are things, there are more, there's more that we can learn from each other if we start to think about well, data this way. If we all help each other collectively, we're all going to improve and then the end, everybody wins. Yes. Right. The the world yes. of oh, I have the keys to the kingdom over here, and I'm not going to tell anybody. I mean, those those folks are going to go off to the side. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. So are you you're doing uh, primarily marketing? Yeah. For this so, project. Yep. So industry messaging. Um, you know how obviously this system doesn't exist yet. So how can I start to help people understand what we're doing? Most people come and they're like, hey, are you guys building an agency management system? I'm like, no, we're not building an agency <laughs> management system. Uh, we're actually partnering with an agency management system because we, we are so not building an agency management system. Mm. <laughs> um, right. yeah, they already so, exist. Right, exactly. It's been done. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's what we're working on. That's awesome. I would like to know, what would you, um, just some marketing tips that you would give um, to an agency? Yes. Maybe yeah, it's kind of a different conversation, but um, yep. from your expertise, what, what, what are some marketing tips that you give? Oh my gosh. Um, Google local and reviews are probably the very first thing I would start with. There's Ooh. an agency. Yeah. There's an agency in, um, actually here in Minnesota, about 20 minutes away from my house. And he's got close to like 200 reviews. And he, let me tell you a quick story why I think reviews can be so impactful. Uh, I had a guy come to uh, my, my driveway. I, I'm, from, I'm from Florida originally and now I live in Minnesota. So I left my car in the driveway and we had this hailstorm come down, uh, oh. smashed all these windows in my car. Yeah, it was terrible. I walked outside. I'm like, Sid, what have you done with your life, dude? <laughs> so, uh, so I left it for a day or two. And this guy who was scouting the neighborhood, you know, from a local body shop, knocked on my door. Traditional marketing. No, there was no digital anything in that. He, he literally drove his car from his business to my house, got out of his vehicle, and then knocked on my door. Mm -hmm. And, um, I opened my door and he's like, Hey, so, you know, my name's Rick and, da, 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 da. and we go through this whole process. He recommended incredible beer from a local brewery and, um, yeah, Imperial stout. It was awesome. Um, and I said, well, great. This, this all sounds great. Um, let me let you know. And he said, okay, hands me his business card and, and a sheet. And I closed the door literally not two seconds after I shut that door, I pulled up my phone. I Googled his business and I looked at his reviews on Facebook and it had like 63 reviews on Facebook and I was reading through the comments and about five minutes after reading through the reviews, I said, okay. And I texted mm. him back and we did business. That's amazing. So, so here's the thing. I think um, even if you're somebody who believes in the you know traditional form of marketing, you have to recognize that your customers are online and that they're, they're, they're doing digging, they're stalking you, mm -hmm. right? So what are you showing them online about yourself that convinces them to jump off that ledge? So yep. reviews, social proofing, other people talking about you is one of the most powerful things that you can have with your online pre presence. So definitely, 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 I would say start, start with 
finding a way to integrate asking for review into your pre-existing business process. Um, I'll give you one really quick uh, strategy for that. So a guy that I know, he, uh, as soon as he, as soon as one of his team members will close the deal and, and, and bind the actual policy. So the deal's already, it's officially done now. There's no, there's almost no more conversation that needs to happen. It's been paid. It's been signed on the phone with him says, Hey, would you do me a favor and leave me a Google review or Facebook review? Mm -hmm. And of course mm -hmm. the person is like, yes, of course they're on this emotional high because they've just spent money mm. and then they get off the phone and they're drinking their wine and they're making their chicken marsala and they completely forget. It's very specific. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like me some chicken of course marsala. They're drinking their wine and yeah, you do. Marsala. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're, so they're doing these and, and they forget about the Google review, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's yeah. the thing. Right. And, and you can ask somebody, but they'll, who knows how many, you know, maybe four out of 10 will actually do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe so, less. Maybe one. Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah. So then he, he has his team member uh, write out a note that says, hey, welcome. It's part of his onboarding campaign. Welcome to the family. Uh, and, you know, here's, a, here's my phone number, a couple different things. Oh, hey, by the way, thank you so much for leaving us a Google review. Here's a $5 Starbucks gift card. We just really appreciate it. Sends that off in the mail. And then what does that person think? Oh, my gosh. Total guilt trip right? Oh my gosh, I didn't leave a review. I got, I better go do it really quick. So again, that may not work for you. It may not work for whoever's listening, but find a way to, to, to create, to take that review ask and, and, and put it inside your, your mm -hmm. business process somewhere, some way, somehow. Yeah. I will attest to that because, yeah. because we, we do a process where we ask for the Google review. Um, we built ours up uh, pretty large. And now we use that because we do a lot of, you know, I guess it would be kind of telemarketing, but a lot of like data leads. So we're reaching out to these people. They want social proof. So we're like, go mm -hmm. just Google us right now. They Google mm -hmm. us and immediately they trust us. First mm -hmm. to come up with the yes. most, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. so Same you, with but you got to build that social proof in order to do that. And it takes time. Most people think, oh, I'm going to get, you know, I'll send out an email where I'll get a hundred reviews in a day. No, it take, you gotta, this is going to take a yeah. year, two years, three years yeah. for people it's to 2%, just, percent, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it is a very yeah. small percentage, but, but again, the easier you can make it in this world of, in, of mm -hmm. instant distraction where, you know, two seconds later, they've got their wine and their chicken marsala. You have to have it be easy. Like we will, we, we, if you have the capability to um, send messages, you can send it in the, in message form, you know, email or whatever. And uh, yeah, I, I bought a car up in Phoenix and I not to go down some tangent, but it, it's really <laughs> pertinent to this. I bought this car up in Phoenix at this dealership. Um, it was an electric Fiat, this little tiny car and it's literally this big. And um, <laughs> after I bought it, the guy is sitting, he's like, here, let me show you how everything works. And I'm like, well, you know, I pretty much have, know how this works. But he went in, showed me, and then he took his phone out and he goes, hey, by the way, would you give me a Google review? And he handed me the phone with it already ready to just what? do it. You know, and he Baller. goes, oh, yeah, just log in. And then I'm like, okay. And I look, and as I'm typing, it says how many they have. And it's in the thousands. It's like 5,000 Google reviews. And I'm like, oh, this is, they just do it at every single time. They just hand their <laughs> phone to them, right? Like, I mean, who's going to say no when they hand you their phone? Right? So right. smart. So smart. Did you smart. go home and have chicken marsala and wine? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> of course I did. You guys are going to eat chicken marsala and wine actually, tonight. We, it actually we sounds got good. A, we almost got a divorce because the range for that car is, is 100 miles and Phoenix is, a, and is like 120 so it was the, an interesting drive back. And, and, and it's not like a Tesla. You can charge very fast. I have a Tesla too, but that charges fast at a supercharger, but this does not. Yeah. So we had to stop and, and then wait three hours. It was a whole, oh, that's not good. You yeah, seem was, like a tall dude. Like I'm surprised that you, no, no? Not you're not a tall dude. Oh, well, your, your video is very Five. deceiving. He <laughs> likes to do that. Five He's got nine. a short complex. Normal. I do I? <laughs> well, you're sitting. No. <laughs> I am short and I look short in here. Yeah. I was well, going to say, 
Yeah. This, freaking awesome. this is so awesome. If, if you yeah. could give one piece of advice to somebody coming into the insurance space, if they're crazy mm. enough to do it, what would you give it? What would you give to them? Own your data. Mm. Mm -hmm. Expand. I would read your contracts with your technology vendors and with your carriers and figure out what the, uh, what the data ownership structure looks like and start thinking about what, if it's not in your favor, what they might be doing with it. Mm -hmm. And think about what you could be doing with it if you own it. Right. So yeah. it's very, data is one of the most valuable and, and, and increasingly so assets that we yeah. possess. As True. Especially, when you're, especially when you're spending a lot of money to acquire that data. Yep. You know? So yep. you got to make sure you own that data. And there's and a little company called Google that did pretty good on data. They <laughs> did. did. They? They, did, they did. They did indeed. Yeah. I think I know them. I think I do. They're uh, yeah. And um, you know, e even more so Google has an actual product, right? A, a piece of software that you can go use. Insurance is literally a data business. It's not like a, a chair company, right? Where you go, hey, I'm going to go go to the chair manufacturing plant and I can see how the chairs are made and what wood. And I mean, we're dealing in data every day, all day. It's the thing that we create. It's the thing that we measure. It's the thing that we, so why would we not be thinking about in, an, in a day and age when data is gold? Why would we not be thinking about as business owners who owns that and what we can do with it? Sure. So. Wow. Love it. Drop the mic. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Done. Done? Well, Sid, yeah, Sid, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I know we do these, these fast ones, but we'd love to have you back again down yeah. the road. Uh, yeah. yeah. We'd love to dive a little bit more into marketing because um, oh I, I think that that's a huge, a huge piece that I think a lot of agents are scared to get it. So you have half the agents that, you know, do everything, right? They do Google and, too many. and um, <laughs> yeah, and Facebook ads and all, all kinds of stuff. But then there's a handful of agents that are too scared to get into it. And there's mm -hmm. simple, simple things that you can start off with. Yep. Um, and I, I bet you have some incredible insights to that. And we'd love to get you back. And Anytime. Seriously. I, yeah, I'm happy to share anything. I've learned uh, through some cuts and bruises, some things. So happy to That's share. You learn best. Yeah. That's how you learn best. Yes. Well, thank you. And uh, we will definitely uh, hit you up and on uh, your agree agreement to come back. And yes. we'll see you down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds great. And by the way, thank you guys for having me on too. I really oh, I sure. appreciate it. So um, absolutely, thank yeah. you. Yeah, Thanks, absolutely. Awesome to have the insights. Okay. All right, I'll talk All to right. you guys later. Okay, okay sounds good. Sid. All right, bye. Jason, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up one of our sponsors, EverQuote. Oh, tell me a little bit about them. Well, I've been using them for a couple months, and I'll tell you that the results are delightful. It's been now a couple months, and and over time my cost per sale has dropped every single week. That is awesome. Tell me, so you're on a specific program with them? Yeah, it's called the Accelerated Growth Program. And this, this bad boy gets you a better deal on those leads, so way less expensive. And you get a consultant that's gonna actually go over your results to make sure you're tracking properly. And so you, and you've been doing that for the last couple of months and uh, consulting I have. with them? Yeah, and, and I see everybody complain about leads and, and this and that and it's like look if you don't have a, a process to track and measure your results then I can totally get it you don't even know what your results are right and you asked them to give all the insurance dudes and dudettes out there a killer deal on this and they came through didn't they they came through and I know you're going to take advantage of it but if they go to go.everquote.com forward slash insurance dudes that's go.everquote.com forward slash insurance dudes then guess what what deal city i'm there do it hey you've got to check out the insurance dudes inner circle coming soon where you get extended interviews as well as live coffee talks in our private facebook group join the mailing list today at the insurance dudes podcast.com hey thanks for checking out the insurance dudes hey please subscribe we got some really great stuff coming out